Welcome back to our channel, where we break down all your favorite movies. Today we are going to recap a romance comedy movie called Love and Other Drugs. So without further ado, let's begin. The movie begins with Jamie Randall, who is a picture-perfect dreamy, handsome guy working as a salesman at Pittsburgh Electronic Shop. We see him interacting with several customers and catering to their needs well. But as the scene proceeds, it will come to your notice that often with female customer, he will use his flirtatious ways to lure them and make a sale. Later on, you will see him flirting with a fellow saleswoman, Christy, who is his boss, Jerry's girlfriend. Eventually, they both end up having sex with each other in the storage of the store. During their sexual intercourse, they accidentally end up calling Jerry. Jerry picks up the phone and listens to them making love to each other senselessly. Jeremy ends up firing Jamie. Later that day, while sitting at the dining table, Jamie's brother Josh reveals to his family that Jamie has lost his job. When everyone inquires as for what reason he lost his job, they are told he had some kind fallout with the company's management. Now, we can say by the look of disappointment on his family's face, it seems like they have a slight idea of the issue he can have with his management, because everyone knows he is a womanizer and that can be the only reason. While his family is still digesting the news, he decides to announce that he is considering becoming a pharmaceutical sales representative. Josh supports his decision, but the rest of his family doesn't seem too happy about his decision. Although Jamie is the charmer of the family, but he is not the most successful member of the family. As his father is a distinguished doctor in Chicago, so is his sister and his brother is a nerdy software millionaire. Plus the 90s wasn't the dawn of the psychopharmacological era, so his career choice might seem to be risky at that point in time. Jamie joins the pharmaceutical giant Pfizer as a sales rep with the help of his brother. He goes through a vigorous training where he is taught how to do sweet talk with the doctors, pharmacists, and nurses to whom he will be presenting and selling their products. During his training, he ends up hooking up with the women who is leading the training. I guess one can never let go of his old ways. After his training ends, he gets posted to Ohio River Valley to sell Zoloft and Zithromax under supervision of Bruce Jackson. On his first day, Bruce gives him all kinds of advice that how he will be selling the product to the doctors. He tries to do exactly what Bruce had told him to do previously. He runs behind the doctors in hospitals' parking lots trying to convince them to prescribe the drug to their patients during heavy rainfall but ends up failing. Now the problem here Jamie is facing is that the drug Prozac is the existing market leader of the antidepressant market and Jamie must convince the doctors to prescribe Zoloft instead of Prozac. Bruce and Jamie were sitting in the hospital waiting for a sales appointment. They saw all kinds of beautiful and intoxicating saleswomen walking around and starts discussing how companies are hiring strippers as their saleswomen. Right then a woman passed by them. Jamie being a skirt chaser looks at her playfully and says, Hey Lisa! She looks and smiles at him for a brief moment then starts walking again. Bruce who is watching Jamie says, but her name is not Lisa. Jamie gives him his theory, that by calling her by the wrong name will make her react. And then Jamie can use her reaction to his benefit. This leave Bruce in awe. Next day when they're going to DR Knight's office to convince him, Bruce tells him that this doctor is the key to their success, as a major chunk of the depressed teenagers in Ohio are his patients and that is their targeted market too. So no matter what happens, they need to convince this doctor. As they were discussing this, they saw that in the nurse's room, DR Knight is shouting about some test results. Seeing this, Bruce decides that it's not a good day to talk to Dr. Knight and they should revisit him again some other day. To try their luck again, they both visit DR Knight's office in the hope that they will meet him. But as they were sitting and going through their game plan, a tall blonde hunk known as Trey Hannigan walks straight towards the receptionist and start wooing her with his irresistible charms. Then he walks straight into doctor's office without any appointment. While Jamie's eyes are fixated on the scenario, Bruce tells him that this guy ranks in top 10 sales rep and he is one of the biggest reasons that they don't get a quota on Zoloft. Defeatedly, they walked out of Dr. Knight's office without meeting him. Suddenly, Bruce tells Jamie that he being the Romeo of every woman's fairy tale can get them a ticket to Chicago, aka the promised land. He just need to use all his seducing powers to get them to work. With bigger dreams of money and big city, Jamie gets on to work with a game plan. He uses his old ways to flirt and seduce DR Knight's staff and ends up sleeping with one of the ladies named Cindy. He ends up succeeding in putting his samples on the stand where Dr. Knight sees them. He starts sowing his seeds of wickedness for Trey. Every time when he puts Zoloft samples on the shelf, he takes all the Prozac samples and throw them into a dustbin outside the hospital. Even though Jamie was trying very hard but was still failing to get the desired results, 
Bruce tells him that if he get DR Knight to prescribe Zoloft to his patients, every doctor in the town would be prescribing it. Jamie understood the assignment, and after bribing DR Knight with $1,000, he ends up working with him as a fake intern. Right when Jamie starts working as an intern, the undertone of movie changes as Jamie meets Maggie Murdoch, while Dr. Knight was examining her for Parkinson's disease and then her breast for a spider bite. At this sight of half-naked Maggie, a desire stir up in Jamie's head, but soon he gets caught by Maggie for acting as a fake intern while he was going through his Zoloft samples present in the trunk of the car. He tries to charm her up, but she doesn't fall for it. His desire for Maggie intensifies more. Jamie ends up asking Cindy for Maggie's number, and Cindy finds it for him from her patient record. He ends up calling her and asking her out on a date. After a spindle of wits, where Jamie is trying to flirt with Maggie, she cuts up to the chase and tells him that she was also looking for a no-strings-attached relationship. So, they both will be perfect for each other. Both of them ends up hooking up together multiple times at her workplace, in their apartment, on the street, and where not. Maggie is a commitment child woman. Who doesn't want her feelings to get attached with someone because she feel conscious of herself due to Parkinson? Jamie and Maggie starts to spend more time together and where she meets Jamie's brother Josh, who is now living with him because he broke up with his girlfriend. They start to talk with each other more now after their sexual intercourse. Suddenly, Maggie warns Jamie to keep things straight and not get his feeling involved with her at any cost, to which Jamie agrees because he is getting what he want without any burden of a relationship. What more can he ask for? Have you ever heard the saying karma hits you back? Well, that is what happens next to Jamie. Next morning when Jamie was throwing Prozac in the dustbin, Trey catches him and beats the shit out of him. Trey warns him not to mess with him again and he should stay away from Maggie. When he goes into the hospital after the fight, Dr. Knight's staff doesn't let him in for placing his samples. Cindy also acts cold towards Jamie because Trey has informed everyone everything about Jamie. After having a bad day at work, Jamie goes to Maggie's place with food to have lunch with her. As they proceed to eat, they start talking about Maggie's history with Trey Hannigan. After this discussion, they end up being intimate with each other where Jamie faces erectile dysfunction. Maggie laughs at the situation and tells him about a new drug Viagra which Pfizer is launching for erectile dysfunction soon and suggests him to use it. After spending the night together, as Jamie was leaving Maggie's apartment, he tells Maggie that he will call her. Maggie tells Jamie not to call her because she cannot afford getting her feelings attached with him. He looks disappointed as he sighs and then leaves. He meets Bruce afterwards, interrogates him about Viagra and end up convincing him to give him the account of Viagra. As soon as he takes over Viagra account, it turns out to be a holy grail in medicine industry. Jamie becomes one of the most successful sales representatives in Ohio. Later, he convinces Dr. Knight to prescribe Zoloft. On the other hand, Maggie starts ignoring Jamie, but he starts following Maggie everywhere. Looking at his efforts, Maggie say that he will give them a chance. With time, their feelings intensifies for each it. They can't keep their hands off each other. This initial physical and sexual attraction turn into passionate feelings for each other with time. During a sales dinner, Cassie, who he previously called Lisa, tries to throw herself at him because he is famous and successful now, but seems like he is a one women's man now. He doesn't give in to her provocative tactics and introduces her to Dr. Knight, mentioning how she is into doctors. When he comes back from the sales dinner and gets intimate with Maggie, suddenly he feels his heart beating fast. Maggie thinks that he is having a panic attack and tells him to calm down. At that very moment, Jamie confesses to Maggie looking all flustered that he loves her and how he have never confessed to anyone else in his whole life. As a reaction, Maggie goes into shock and goes blank, not sure how to react to his love towards her. Apparently, when Maggie was with Jamie, she seemed to be happy, but when she was alone and have her thoughts all by herself gets depressed about how her health is declining day by day. She believes that no one will want her because of her disease and will end up being a liability to someone. While all these dark thoughts are going through her head daily, she faces a situation where she was suffering from pain but can't get her medicines. This makes her more vulnerable. This situation act as a fuel to the fire when Jamie and Maggie have a slight disagreement on her alcohol consumption that day. Maggie starts questioning Jamie while feeling conscious about herself that why he is still with her when he can have any pretty normal women in the town, and then she starts hysterically crying. Looking at Maggie's state, Jamie feels empathy for her and decides to take her to Chicago for a medical conference. During the conference, she meets a sweet old lady whose son is suffering from Parkinson level 3. She invites Maggie to a counter-conference for people suffering from Parkinson disease. During this conference, she sees how people, instead of being depressed and going crazy about having Parkinson, 
in the middle of the conference, Maggie pages Jamie to come and join her. He goes to the conference with the intention of meeting her there and supporting her. But when he enters and hears all the jokes about the disease, he feels uncomfortable at that very instant and decides to leave without meeting Maggie. Meanwhile, Maggie looks happy and hopeful about the future. When Jamie leaves the main event, he meets a frustrated guy whose wife is suffering from Parkinson level 4 and is here for the conference. Jamie asks him for advice. The guy tells him to leave Maggie because this disease will take everything away from her which he loves about her. After listening to the guy, Jamie gets worried about his future with Maggie. After the convention, Maggie says sorry for behaving badly. She feels now for the very first time in her life, someone is there for her, and she is not alone in the cold world. She ends up confessing her love for him. But Jamie doesn't give any reaction as he was still distracted by the previous conversation. Jamie starts looking up for treatment options that Maggie can have and talks about it with Dr. Knight to help him. Because he is worried about their future together. What if this disease gets worse? He takes Maggie to places for her treatment. But they see no silver lining for the problem. And he starts getting frustrated. When Maggie notices his frustration, they get into a nasty fight. Where Maggie claims that she will never get better and there is no cure. She has accepted it and he should also accept it. He must end his obsession. They should go separate ways in life because can't go on feeling like a liability to him. After their breakup, both feel an ache in their heart. They crave for each other's touch. But now they must swallow the hard pill of reality and move on in life. Jamie tries one last time to resolve things in between them by calling her. But he end up listening to a voicemail. One afternoon, Jamie gets a call from Dr. Knight where he invites him to a party. He goes to the party and ends up hooking up with two women after taking a Viagra pill. When he wakes up, he figures out that is having Viagra drug reaction and ends up in the hospital. While he was sitting in the hospital, he gets paged by his office that he just got promoted and now he is going to Chicago, but he doesn't seem happy about it. Jamie goes to restaurant with Bruce to celebrate where he ends up meeting Maggie, who is on a date with another guy named Justin. Maggie gets to know from Bruce that Jamie got promoted and is now going to Chicago. She looks sadly at him and say congratulation. Jamie starts packing his stuff. He then finds a tape of Maggie and him talking about their future and having kids together. All he can see that how deeply in love they are and realizes that he cannot leave Maggie. He goes to her workplace to express his love for her and to win her back but gets to know she is on her way to Canada for a trip. He starts driving crazily to catch her bus up. He ends up stopping Maggie's bus. He gets onto the bus and starts saying he needs to talk to her. He starts confessing all the feelings he has ever felt for her. He tells him that he loves her and need her in life until the day he is alive. Upon listening to this, Maggie starts crying and says, I am going to need you more and that is not fair to you. In reply, he says that she don't need to and they end up hugging each other. This romantic comedy ends up with Jamie not going to Chicago. Instead, he starts living with Maggie. He stops chasing money and instead starts chasing his dreams happily with the love of his life. Thanks for staying with us till the very end. If you liked the video then please consider liking, subscribing and sharing our content. We will see you in the next one.